is September 7th, 2021. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this episode. So today I'm going to be talking about this traditional Irish reel called the wind that shakes the barley and looking at how to create fingerings for it. But more broadly to try to give you some ideas and principles that you can apply to anything that you're working on in terms of creating great fingering. So on the harp, I think having a good set of fingerings for a passage can make the difference between a passage feeling impossible to play and feeling easy. So it's really, really important. And uh, of course, you can get a piece of music where maybe someone has already written some fingerings in. Great. But I think it's also really important to know for yourself how to come up with them. And of course, not everybody's hands are the same. And so fingerings that work for me may not work for you. So here at the end of this, there'll be a lead sheet with fingerings on it, and, and you can get it if you sign up to my newsletter. Um, but those are fingerings which may or may not feel great for you. But what I hope you'll come out of this episode with is, as I say, some principles and ideas that you can then apply as you're working on pieces on, on your own. So as I say, this is the wind that shakes the barley, which is a, a traditional Irish reel. Um, a little confusing because there's also a, a rather slow, mournful song, Irish song, about an Irish rebellion called The Wind That Shakes the Barley. And it's funny because this piece, I, I created this little lead sheet because a student had requested it, and I went to the session.org.org, fantastic resource, found a version, created a little lead sheet with fingerings, but actually what he had in mind was the slow air. Um, so two, same title, two different pieces. But this is, this reel is quite up-tempo. And one thing to be aware of, with music like this is that it's actually kind of unusual in the sense that, first of all, there are often many different variations on the same tune. So if you go to the session.org and look for the wind that shakes the barley, you'll find several different versions often with, or any, any of these traditional tunes, many different versions with often little variations. Some might have this note as a sharp or a flat, or, or we go in this direction or that direction, and it's still, you can tell it's the same piece, but it's different. So that means in terms of fingerings, if we don't like how a particular piece is, traditional piece is, maybe there's a version that's slightly different that would fit easier, more easily under our hands, right? And of course, there's also the idea that you might add in a bunch of grace notes, maybe not so much always on, the, on these super fast ones, but, and that might be that by adding in some extra notes, it, kind of counterintuitively might make a section easier to finger. So unlike a lot of, say, classical music, where there's sort of the assumption that exactly what's on the page, that's what we're going to try to work with, it's a little bit different um, for for something like this, where, where we could adapt and, and, and finagle around. But for the most part, I'm just going to stick with the written version right here and go through it and look at these fingering principles. So. Three points I want to talk about before I tackle that. One is that technique, the idea of practicing all these sort of technique exercises, hopefully gives us the ability then to sort of play the platonic ideal fingering. That are we're able to you know play fingers in whatever direction and whatever we want. And so to come up with, as I say, the sort of the platonic ideal of this passage should ideally be fingered this way. But the sort of counterpoint to that is that everyone's fingers are a little bit different. And it's one thing if you're working on a particular technique and you say, okay, I'm gonna use this fingering because it lets me work on crossing under, for example. But if you're looking at a piece and saying, this is my technique, this is where it is, this is my, how my fingers and hands feel, you should be looking at finding fingerings that work for you, right? That, that feel really good under your hand. And finally, the third point is that oftentimes a passage needs to sort of be battle tested. They, you can play it through slowly and maybe the fingering seems okay, but it's a different matter when you get it up to speed. And so that's where often if you can do a small little chunk, if you're unsure about a fingering on a little passage, try to get that passage up to speed and then see how it feels. And, and again, it may be that you have a set of fingerings, they seem okay, but as you play it and continue to play it and maybe perform it, you might end up changing. And so just being a little bit flexible that way. Okay, okay. So. Let's start with this first little phrase. Well, right away, we see that there's a five note descending passage right here. 
So we know we have to do something. We can't just, so ideally, okay, principle, with faster notes, we want to connect. So this first note, the, the quarter note, we could come off if we want. We're probably gonna play it with two. We could come off, maybe. I like to come off. Some people might want to because we're gonna play it again and then the B place. And actually, I kind of like that, right? So depending on the speed and the sound, right, that's gonna change what we wanna do. So I'm gonna put a two there and, and kind of wait until I play a little bit more to make up my mind in terms of do I want the thumb place? And then we are definitely going to try and connect as we get to these faster notes. So I just need to erase that. So two, one. But we come to a classic problem with a harp is we only are using four fingers. Well, three fingers and a thumb. So, ah, more fingers, we need more fingers. Ah! So what can we do? And we could cross over. And in this case, because we have this gap right here, right, this little gap here of a third, We don't really want to cross the thumb over. So there's another principle that we don't, we would prefer if we're doing crossing over to cross over just one string. So in that case, that would mean we could go, right? So there's a possibility. One, two, three, one, two. And then we'd have to reach up with one. So it's a bit of a stretch. Right? But it's a possibility. But if we see a sequence of five notes in a row going down, one of the things that should immediately jump to mind is a slide. And here we're in luck because the first two notes, the B and the A, are right next to each other, so we could slide. And particularly when it's fast. So again, that idea that fingering, one of the things to be aware of is how does it sound? How does it feel and how does it sound? And if it were slow, For me, I would want to avoid that thumb slide sound. So I might, I would definitely be happy to cross over, but in terms of the absolute speed you can achieve, a slide will always be faster than a cross. So. So I think in this case, this to me seems fairly clear that it's going to be one, one, two, three, four. And that makes it easy to reach back up for this B, right? Four, one, it's a sixth. Ideally, that would be three, one, but four, one's no problem. That feels great. Now we've got another little sequence, so we can certainly come off, and we have to come off on this B because we're repeating it, right? Ooh, uh, there we go, come off. But now we get a little interesting bit because we've just played this with a thumb. And in isolation, this next little bit, three, four, three, two, one, two, three. That would be great, but it means a big jump of the hand to go from the thumb to three. Are there other options? So, hmm. Well, we could try to play the thumb again on here and go four, three, two, one. What would that feel like? And again, here's where I talk about sort of, ideally, you would like to feel very comfortable placing four and one right next to each other, which can feel a little bit awkward, so that, <clears throat> excuse me, these fingers are not curling up, right? They're just tucked down here comfortably. And we're able to play that and then place all of these and do that. Or also, conversely, be comfortable placing three and four and doing that. And so then it kind of becomes a question of, okay, in this case, or To me, both of them 
them feel pretty good actually. So, but this would definitely be a case where, again, if I were, so you'll see, and if, if you get the lead sheet, um, you'll see I have put a finger in there, but this is a case where whatever feels best to you, right? It's, it's, if three, four, it feels much better, or if one, four, it feels much better, great. Now let's also just explore a couple other options because we could go, One, two, one, two, one, two, three. So that would look like this. One, oops, sorry. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Now, again, the pr general principle would be don't cross under or over if you can avoid it, because it tends to be a lot harder than just having a group of notes placed. And in this case, we can go we can have those and not have to cross over under but if for example this one four three or three four three if that feels really awkward to you and one two one and then across maybe that's a great option then mm. so to me that definitely feels a little more awkward than the other options but it might be a great option for you right so i'm um, just just playing around with that so i'm going to i'm going to put three four in here just because that's what i have been doing <laughs> um but keeping in mind uh sorry three four three two one two three keeping in mind that we might change that great and then oh here this next little passage this looks like the very beginning, same as the very beginning, right? So we know that we can go two and then a slide. Great, and that's the nice thing about a lot of this traditional music is there is a certain amount of repetition. So if we get something we're really happy with, chances are we might be able to do it again. Um, so we can go, we've gone three, four, three, two, one, two, three, off. And here is a case where it's actually is written, it's really awkward. There, there's no, unless we involve the left hand, and I'm assuming that the left hand here is going to be playing some sort of chords, and we're going to try to do all the tune in the right hand. Of course, if we wanted to, we could try to get this left hand playing. Uh, playing that D, the last note of that bar, so we don't have to jump up here. But for now, I'm just going to assume all of this is going to be done with the right hand. And so how, th there's no good fingering to get us up there. I'm um, ending up with four on the D and jumping up to the thumb is our best option. That's our best option. That's great. But it's still awkward. This is a case where we could consider what if we played that G down an octave? So we. jump up to the D and that would actually work much better. But anyway, I'm just going to assume we're going to try to do this as written. It's just a very, very awkward little jump. So we're jumping up to the thumb. So we will have to come off here and we jump up to the thumb. And now again, we've got a sequence of five notes going down, right? So we might think slide. And I would say that's not entirely the case is we're going to find out, but let's, let's, let's go with that. Five notes in a row. The first two are in sequence, so we can slide. Okay, we're on four. That means we have to do four, two, one. And then one, two, three. That seems to work pretty well. Now again, that idea of sort of technique will, will in influence what sort of fingering you're gonna use. So it might be that this four, two, one position is not comfortable. Right? It, ideally, of course, it should be. You should be able to do 4-2-1. Um, 
Again, that third finger instead of up here is, is tucked in down here. But if you wanted to avoid that, you could do, well, we could do, then we kind of want to end up on three on that B, right? We kind of reverse engineer this. We say, okay, if we want to end up with, and maybe I'll just erase this, oops. Erase this for now. If we want to end up with three on the B, because three, two, one, two, three, that looks really good. So that means maybe we want to have two here and one, and that means one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three. So I think, again, that's not as fast. I think the slide is a little bit easier, but if you don't want to do that four, two, one, and actually, as we'll see later on, there's another potential reason to do the one, two, one, two, three. So I'm going to leave the one, two, one, two, three here on the moment, but keep in mind, I think the slide is the most efficient on that. So then, oh, great. We get what we just had above here, two, one, one. We do the slide again, two, three, four, one, off, three, four, keeping in mind, it could be one, four, or one, two, one, two, one. This is all looking to be the same, lovely. Uh, this is also the same, two, one, one. We have that slide, two, three, four. Gotta come off, because we jump. Um, unless you can reach, I mean, there's a, it's a big reach and hard when it's fast. I think probably easier just to jump. Okay, now, aha, aha. So now this bar, right, this bar, um, here looks, and in fact is, oh, it looks, ah, it is not, right? It looks the same as the one above it. And the first seven notes are the same, but it does something different at the end. It has an E instead of a D, right? So that we went, the first time we went, this time it's gonna go, we'll try the same fingering at the moment. Oh. So before we get to this, this F here, which we're going to have to come off, we know we're going to come off on because we're going to repeat that. And it's a longer note. That's great. We have a five note sequence starting from this B up to this F. So again, we're in this situation. Well, okay, we're going to have to do something about that. Now we could slide on the way down because as we mentioned, we can do the slide. We could slide on the way back up. And here's a case where I talk about technique. For me, my fourth finger slide is not particularly good. It's not something I practice that much and I just don't like it. Um, so technique is preventing me from doing that as an option. Um, I would not consider doing a fourth finger slide there. But if your fourth finger slides are great, this would be a, a great spot to put them in, right? Slot. You can see it's just, it's not comfortable for me, but a great option if that works for you, right? If it doesn't, well, so if we slide, we end up with four on that B, but now we have five notes in a row coming up. So we either have to go maybe four, two, one, two, one, or we could do four, three, two, one, two. That's kind of an unusual thing because in general, so another general principle that when we get to the top of a run and come off, we'd like that last note to be the thumb. It's almost always the case, but it, I mean, there's, there's no harp fingering place that's going to come and, and yell at you if that's not the case. And sometimes it is handy to, to end like that, to do that. Again, normally we would do three, two, one, two, one, or two, one, three, two, one. But in this case, if we're sliding, if we're sliding, I think we definitely want to do that. If we're sliding down and not doing a slide up, a fourth finger slide up, I think we definitely want to do four, three, two, one, two. Or at least that's what feels, feels best to me. Now, again, of course, you could do four, two, one, two, one. So That's one option. Now we could go back to the alternate fingering that we had the first time, the potential of one, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, one.
And so here's again that, that sort of battle testing because I'm looking at that first set of pingvins, the ones that I currently have written in here on, on, on this bar. And what I'm realizing is that while they make sense, if I were putting this in finale and, and not playing it, that would be a reasonable fingering to me. Um, what I'm finding is I want to start with one, two, three. Even though we definitely, as we reverse engineer it, we definitely want a third finger there. We have to have a third finger there. So one, two, three, one, three. It's kind of weird not to go one, two, one, two, three, uh, sort of in sequence, but this feels much better to me. Interesting. So uh, again, that kind of battle testing, that trying it out and seeing what actually feels best for you and trusting your fingers in that case. So if we go down to this next line we're working on, what if we do that one, two, three, one. I think we'd want to keep the same fingering. Yeah, so I think we would, in this, that case, um, maybe I'll write this underneath. Um, slightly different color here, I think. One, two, three, one, three, two, one, two, one. Cool. So again, which though is the slide better? Well, let's keep going. Cause again, it might be that is as we get, so the fact that this bar and this bar start the same kind of have the same pattern for seven notes means it might be nice to do the same fingering for those first seven notes if we possibly can which we kind of can so um let me uh, it's not really i should be writing this above and uh, below but anyway if we do the slide right it's one one two three oh, sorry the slide should be um on top i guess it's all just really awkward um one one we'll do it that way two three four two one so and and we're comparing it to this set of fingerings right there um if we compare those they're the same for the first five notes right we do the slide and then we either do four two one or four three two one two Okay, anyway, just things to keep in mind, right, as, as, as we're going through here. So now we get a new bit, and this is kind of interesting because here at bar nine, I'm gonna give you two potential fingerings, right? One, I, which I say would be kind of a typical fingering would be one, two, one, off, one, two, one, off. But you might also try two, three, one off, of course. Two, three, or sorry, uh, one. Uh, one, three, two. Mm. One, three, two off. So kind of on that idea of by using three different fingers, it might actually make that flow a little bit better than going one, two, one, one, two, one, depending on how it feels to you, right? So there, that's, a, that's an option. Um, okay, then we get another little run and we look, have we had this before? Not quite. So this, oh, we've got five notes in a row going up. So again, assuming we don't want to slide that, that means I think it's, seems fairly clear again sort of abstract before we try it at least one two three works out perfectly we end up three two one two one let's try that great oh wait a minute we kind of had that same thing because right over here we go up five notes in a row to that f right so if we're using this slide fingering four three two one two maybe we want to try to do the same thing here we go one two four three two one two 
Right, because then right after this, we're going to get the same little passage here and here, right? Same little maybe two, three, one, uh, or one, two, one, whichever you prefer. So that would lead us to want to kind of do the same thing. So if we're doing, if we're doing the uh, bottom set of fingerings here, then that three, two, one, two, three, three, two, one, two, one, sorry, matches the same both times. But if we're doing the top and, and uh, sorry, I'm very disorganized because I should, the, the top and bottom are not going to match up here anyway. But if we're doing the uh, top on the previous one, I'm going to write underneath here, one, two, four, three, two, one, two. Hmm. Interesting. And, and come off, of course. Um, okay. So, and then what have we got next? Oh, another five note uh, little pattern going down, right? Hmm. We can't slide because the top note, right? The A and then the F, there's a gap. So we can't slide. I think this is going to be three, two, one regardless of what we do. Um, so if we go one, two, three, four, that's really awkward because then we end up with the thumb on the B. Now we could, but I'm not, let's not do that. Okay, so what could we do instead? Well, let's, oh, and we see, right, that 13 is the same as bar nine. Again, here's this little five bar rising phrase that's gonna end up with this, one, two, one, or the two, three, one, uh, one, three, two, or one, two, one. And this is the same, right? Um, oh, oh, this is interesting. I'm getting sidetracked, but here, one, two, Oh, sorry, one, two, but it would be nice to have four because we have four notes in a row here. So four, three, two, one, and then another five set going up where again, we can either do that four, three, two, one, two, kind of unusual, but it works, or the three, two, one, two, one. Uh, okay, okay, but here, this little bit with a four, three, two, one, It kind of makes us want to maybe do this, have this fingering that has the four, maybe. Um, so let's go back to this bit right here. This bit right here. And think about, so we could go, I think, did we say we could go one, two, three, sort of a similar principle to what we've done before. One, three, two, one, two, one. Okay, let's test that, right? Feels pretty good to me. But what if we want to have that four, three, two, one, two? What if we want to finish that little five note run with the, do that five note run with four, three, two, one, two? It means we have to end up with a fourth finger on that B. So how can we do that, right? If we're going to try to go four, three, two, one, two. Well, I think our still our best option is. One, two, three is good at the start of this run because if we do one, two and then cross over, it's the same problem I had in bar five, four, where I didn't recognize immediately, but the principle would be that we want to try to place a few notes so we're not immediately crossing over on the way down. So it's nice to have one, two, three before we have that extra stress uh, or effort of crossing over. So one, two, three, one. I think that that, that works, right? So we can go one, two, three, one, four, three, two, one, two. Great. So now we're, we're right here. So here we could try that four, three, two, one, two. Let's just check to see if that works with the lead in. 
Oh, it's a little awkward, right? To go. So how about? This is a case where again, same as I just talked about going down, would like to place, if we're gonna split it three and two, would rather start with a three and then do the two. So it's same as if we're going up, we'd rather go three, two, one, two, one. But because of this, because we're going right back to that D, I think this is a case where it would make sense to instead go two, one, three, two, one off. Here, we're not worrying about connecting to this B because we've got a nice long note, right? So that's, we're just going to do that little five note run and come off um, so that. And now this one is actually six, so we can't slide. And It actually works out really nicely because it's the same shape twice in a row. One, two, three, one, two, three. Perfect, right? We end up with three, two, one, two. Oh, and this one, if we're repeating, would be the third finger, right? And so it's this shape. One, two, skip. One, two, skip. Cool. So again, kind of testing these out, let's try. So I'm gonna try the, I'm gonna try the, the sort of the non-slide, non four, three, two, one, two fingering. Oh, sorry, I did the wrong fingering there. messing me up because I did those on the wrong top and bottom. Okay, I have to fix that. Sorry, I have to fix that. Um, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's uh, reverse these, right? So on the top, we want to do this one, two, three, one, three, two, one, two, one. And on the bottom, one, one, we'll do that slide again. Oh, I guess we're, we're supposed to do it here. Like this. Two, one, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two. And then I think we're consistent, right? Yeah. Okay, let's try that again from the top. Was, was at nine, I do want to do the, that two, three, one, one, three, two. I think for me, that feels a little bit better. I'm also going to try the slide in the four, three, two, one, two. Oh, sorry. feeling of the slide um, I kind of like the feeling of the slide on both of these bars but I don't necessarily feel that I need to do this fingering and definitely not that fingering on the last line so though, even though that would be consistent with that sort of four, three, two, four, three, two, one, two, I, I'm not sure that I would want to do those. So 
this would then just be a case of, of picking one or, or, or pl playing the passage both ways for a while or picking one and playing the whole piece for a while and seeing if that's feeling comfortable. And again, the, the, the harder the piece is to play, the more you will want to hone into that perfect set of fingerings for you. Whereas if it feels quite slow, then it doesn't really matter maybe what piece. And again, then you're looking at sound plays a bigger and bigger role. Maybe the slower the piece is, it's not the most efficient fingering. It's the fingering that delivers the best sound you want. So for me, that would be avoiding slides. But um, yeah, hey, thanks for watching this rather long episode. Um, but I hope that something in there has been useful. And again, maybe some principles you can apply, not just to this, but to any piece that you're working on. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I will see you in a couple weeks time. <laughs> Cheers. Thank mm -hmm. you.